everybody, Dan Ullman, Ashley Mayu. The DRF race of the day for Saturday, September the 9th, race number 10 at Del Mar. Grade one stakes action for two-year-old fillies. The prestigious Del Mar debutante going seven-eighths of a mile. Let's take a peek at this field. Please click or scan the QR code for race of the day access on mobile, which includes free formulator pass performances. I guess without a Baffert runner in this race, no one is scared away, actually. We get a full field of 14. It is wide open, and all eyes are going to be on the number nine Tamara out of the superstar mare beholder. Yeah, there's been striking similarities already made uh, between her and her mom. But as you mentioned, I mean, this field is pretty wide open with the group also being lightly raced or even a lot of runners here. They're stretching out or they're moving from the turf to the dirt. I really think this becomes a really great betting race. And I'm curious to see, too, come this weekend, uh, how these horses are going to take respect on the tote board. Because I had a tough time narrowing it down to four runners. Dan, I'm sure you had the same. I think there's a lot of different angles to maybe consider when handicapping this race. So many angles, including who's going to get the seven eighths, especially considering the chance and the very good chance there's going to be a fast pace. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. When you have horses like the seven dream fire, the eight pushiness, and even the one Julia's dream who's shown speed on turf, likely to be a barbecue up front. We'll see who can kick late. The three pretty Layla is going to be a giant price. She has the LP flag with the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating. She's a maiden in the field, but she has gone long. She went a mile last time out, albeit though it was on the turf. But uh, she's closed in both of her races, so I agree with that. I think she's the true closer in here. I think there are a lot of horses that uh, have found themselves on the lead in their debut and have been able to take it gate to wire. And I think there are others that got nice trips just off the pace. But I agree. I, I do think this pace is going to be quite quick early. Ashley, as you mentioned, what are the great handicapping angles in this race? And questions are how are horses going to handle switching surfaces like the one and the two? And we'll start with the number one, Julia's Dream. And you couldn't ask for anything more in her career debut. She showed brilliant early speed going five eighths on the lawn at Del Mar. And she just extended in the stretch. And I think she has a little bit of dirt pedigree. Her sire is a very promising first crop uh, stallion. And she's a half to a stakes place dirt runner. You mentioned the pedigree. I think Flameaways, they've done very well, uh, especially early on in their careers. And I think looking at her, I mean, she's got an 88 buyer speed figure. As we mentioned, it is on the grass, but look at the rest of the field. She has the highest buyer. I think Michael McCarthy moving her to the dirt has some confidence and her, her, I guess her race last time out, it was never in question. I mean, she looked free the entire way and to see her win that easy, I think was very impressive. Also knowing that just Del Mar, doesn't matter the surface, this time of year, everyone wants to run there. So these fields are always locked and loaded. The number two is Next Right Thing. She made her debut in the Julia's Dreams race. Well, while she was no match for that one, she also had a very tough outside post position. She had to work extremely hard to get forwardly placed, and she still hung in there pretty nicely to finish third. Her sire, Fast Anna, was a dirt horse and a good dirt sprinter, and the Dan was grade three placed on synthetic. And look at her works. I mean, she's had two bullet drills on the main track since that effort, and they're very quick. They're both 59 flat, the fastest at the five furlong distance, both of those mornings. Uh, I think it's intriguing. The barn doesn't, you know, they're not too shabby moving those horses from the turf to the dirt. And as you mentioned, maybe she was compromised by her post last time out. And as we said, Julia's dream, they're all just trying to catch her in the end, and it just wasn't happening. We talked about the three, Pretty Layla, a maiden, as a potential closer in this race. But there are angles. You mentioned her cutting back in distance. And while she seemed to improve on turf last time out, I wonder if it was simply because they gave her an opportunity to stretch out. I like horses cutting back to seven-eighths on the dirt. She's going to get the right setup. At 30-1, to one, she can at least crack the single-race exotics at the very least. I completely agree. And I think looking at that race in terms of a mile, um, opening quarter was quick. They slowed it down for the half and she was still making up ground all the way through the stretch. So you have to think with a hotter pace, even though she's going to cut back and distance and go seven ace on the main track. Um, if the pace is as hot as we think it will be based on what we've seen on these horses, say their first career starts or their second, you have to think she's going to have something left in the stretch. It just depends though, I guess, how far does the field get away from her early on? Benedetta is the number four. She's very solid. She won her debut in likable fashion in uh, gate to wire fashion at Los Alamitos. And then the Sorrento last time out, she was second behind Dreamfire. I thought she tried her hardest in that race. She tried to make a move at the winner. She was rebuffed, but she stayed on gamely for the place. 
I kind of doubted her in that race. I didn't love her in that spot. And obviously she went off favored. So what do I know in the end? But I think the big thing is now they're going to take blinkers off of her. You wonder if you'll see a new dimension. She's raced with blinkers in both of them. And on debut, she was very sharp out of the gate. And uh, last time out, she didn't make the lead in there. We know how quick horses like Dreamfire are and other runners in that group. So I'm curious to see if it'll allow her to settle more. And maybe we'll see her stalking the pace early on. The Five Hope Road is another maiden, but she's well-bred, she's well-connected, and she's versatile. She came from off the pace in her career debut to finish a close second. She showed sharp speed last time out before tiring late. I think they'll revert to the former tactics here, but it's nice to know that she can run well, whatever the pace shape is. Always good to find that out. Maybe they had that plan in mind. Maybe they didn't, but they were stretching her out too, right? From five ace to six and a half. And I think that's a nice thing to see, right? She's gone six and a half. Now she's just got to go seven. It's not that much further. She did get tired though a little bit on the front end there. So I agree. I think they may go back in tactics and switch things up. Also just knowing that the, the field is uh, speed ridden. I mean, there's so much speed in here. So I think we'll see her probably getting a trip just off of it. But again, uh, it's tough. It's tough in a race like this when you have maidens that have shown some promise when they're facing horses that already have wins under their belts. Let's watch the career debut of the number six, Chatelassen. It just seems like we have another running uh, the progeny of gun runner. They all can run. And this filly looked good and professional in this race. She settled off the lead. She wasn't speed crazy. She got out of the gate well enough. And when it was time to run, she produces a steady grinding style to get up late. I think this is a race she can build off of. And if the speeds go, I don't see why she can't sit a fine trip in mid-pack. I like seeing horses like this. I don't necessarily love the ones that go gate to wire every time because you wonder if that gets in their system. Is that the only way that they win? So I'd rather have the horse that sits the trip. I thought she made a nice move in the stretch. She got up in time. Based on that, you would think she can go longer with a very similar trip just because she was hitting her best strides late. And, and Mark Glad, he's really done well with these younger two and three year olds. Just a couple of races under their belt and developing them. And I, it's hard to knock his numbers. So I, I can understand why this one is going to take a lot of respect in this field. Our next two runners are both flawless from two starts. They've never been headed. The Seven Dream Fire's done a lot. She made her debut against the boys in a stakes race in Northern California, and she blitzed them. Then she came down in the Sorrento last time out. She had to prove it in Southern California, and she did. In the blink of an eye, she was clear early. She's traveling very sweetly into the stretch, and she wins without much fuss at all. This is a really big performance. You talk about, you know, she took a lot of respect in here, but coming out of the race at Pleasanton to then go to Del Mar and get that win, uh, the odds were against her in a lot of ways, right? You don't really know what she's made out of, and I thought it was a good performance. And you can see in that race, you saw Vendetta try to move to the inside then, and no one was making up ground. She was much the best. As you've mentioned, though, also, she hasn't been headed yet. I'm very curious to see if she gets heavy pressure early on, which could potentially happen here. What is she going to have left? Um, is she going to be able to continue to kind of grind it out? She did take a step forward, though, also going to Del Mar, and she got an 81 buyer speed figure from the effort. But she's been a, a fun one to watch in those two starts. And again, another offspring of Flame Away here, showing that these horses are doing really well early. It's nice to see Mike Rapoli with a presence in California, and he has the Calbred, the number eight, pushing his facing open foes for the first time. But boy, is she fast from the gate. Here's her win, second time out in the CTBA, going five and a half furlongs, and at odds on, she never gave this field a chance. No, never did, and everyone else, again, is trying to grind, but... A lot of these horses are dropping back and losing some ground because she's just opening up here. And uh, I'm curious to see her go longer. It was a her debut was obviously dazzling. Then she took the stack, the excuse me, the stakes competition and handled it quite well. I know she's a cow bred, but um, another one that's hard to knock. But we'll have to see. It's a similar story. I want to see what happens under pressure. Can she kind of dig in? I, I will say, though, I thought she still looked good throughout the stretch there. If the seven and the eight engage in pace warfare, maybe the nine Tamara, the daughter of the brilliant beholder, will be the one to sit just off them and take direct advantage. Here's her debut, and this debut is not at five, it's not at five and a half, it's at six and a half furlongs. And it's not easy for a first time starter to win going more than six this early in their career. And she sat a very comfortable trip. She got to the outside. And you can just tell once Mike Smith pushed the button right here, it's all over. I think she also looks the part. She's a pretty big two-year-old filly. You can see here how she's going to cover the ground and sort of with her running style, you have to think longer races are in her future. And, um, you know, we all kind of 
became enamored with her because her mom is bolder. But when you see a horse like that being ready to roll on debut, I thought it was very impressive and uh, curious to see what she'll do here. She has a huge blowout drill before this race, and I think she's going to be cranked and ready to go. I wonder if the 10 Where's My Ring is a bit of a sleeper in this spot. She was dismissed on the tote in her career debut, and she made this big mid-race move into contention only to be run down in the shadow of the wire. She earned a respectable 71 buyer speed figure, and if this pace falls apart, maybe at a big price. She's one running late. She tried very hard in that race overall, and to see her get defeated by that slim of margin, you almost feel bad for her. But I wonder if she also, uh, you know, got a lot out of that experience. My one concern would be she did surrender at five and a half. You would think that she would be more fit for her second career start, but she's going to have to stretch out in distance. And um, that's something that I think a, a big thing that would at least be a deciding factor for me is how much action she takes on the tote, because she didn't take any, as you mentioned, on debut. The 11 Motet made her career debut in a very tough spot. That was the Sorrento. She was 54 to 1. She didn't do much running that day. She didn't break very well, but I just wonder if at this point in her career, this caliber of competition is too tough. I think it might be. I think maybe they're, you know, they're going to take another shot. They obviously must have high hopes for her if they debut her in the stake, but just knowing that other horses, um, even if they are maidens, they were closer to it when it was all said and done. Um, I think it looks better for them and, and for her. Um, she's going to be a huge price in here and she's really going to need to turn the tables. Well, the 12 gate to paradise didn't win her debut for John Sheriffs. Sheriffs likes to take his time with his first time starters. He has much better numbers second and third out. And I have a feeling this expensive daughter of Arrogate gained a lot of experience racing down inside, maybe getting a little bit of dirt in her face. I can see her stepping forward. She's going to have to probably step way forward to win this though. She costs nearly a million dollars, so they have to think, you know, based on what they saw physically from her and her pedigree, that she has a lot of potential in her future. I think the debut was fine. I do think she's going to be a type that probably does want to go longer in her career. And as you've mentioned, I think the big thing here is the barn is just known for not having them ready to roll on debut. They're nearly 30% second timeout, so she can take a step forward. I just wonder if she takes a step forward and others do here based on her debut. I think others look a little bit more enticing. Laurent is by the very precocious stallion, practical joke, and she looked good winning her career debut in a maiden special. This is the race where she beat Where's My Ring. There was a very fast pace on display. They went the opening quarter in 21 and 2, and you can see these leaders starting to get tired. Where's My Ring is going to end up finishing second. But let's give Laurent some credit. She's flying, and she still has a lot of work to do at this point. Yeah, you still don't think she's probably going to get it done at this point. It's right about here you start to wonder, where's the wire? Can she do it? And uh, the only one in here, really, that's gone from last to first in a race. And the pace, as you've mentioned, has helped that. But I thought it was a really good you know, performance. And you wonder what she can do. You have to think the pace will be hot again and five and a half to seven. Again, I, she's a sort, sort of horse that I think based on that, we're still going to have some speedy opening fractions, or at least we expect. So she should be rolling late, maybe for a piece. I have a feeling that this might be a little bit too much too soon for the 12 cheeky, for the 14 cheeky gal, especially from this tough outside post position. But I really like the way she won her debut. It's a maiden special weight going three quarters of a mile, and she stayed up close to the pace. She's a really good looking daughter of Maximus Mischief, and she just keeps on grinding gamely to win. I think there's a lot of upside potential watching this race, but again, this might be a bit too much too soon. I'll keep her on the watch list for later in the fall. Good performance, but you've mentioned she has the post. She showed speed on debut with that post. I wonder if the hand is forced. Do you have to go to try to get good position because there's going to be a scramble up front? And I think, frankly, just others from what we saw from a limited number of starts, I think they're faster. So uh, I'm curious to see what's going to happen, especially from that post. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for the debutante, our Saturday race of the day. We're both going to go with Beholders, baby. Listen, we're both fans as well as betters. And I think if Tamara goes off at 7-2, to two, I think it's a price I'd be willing to take considering the pedigree, obviously, and the fact that she might trip out just outside the two speeds. I think that's the key for me. Um, pedigree aside, I think it's, it comes down to trip, right? As in terms of, I do think there's a lot of pace here. I think you want to be just a couple of lengths off of it. I thought she looked really professional in her debut and expect her 
as she progresses in her career to handle the added ground and distance with ease. So uh, I'm not shocked to see her on the same horse here, even though it is, as we've talked about, a really wide open event. You're going going nine six seven one. I'm going nine seven four five. I'm a little bit curious to see if Benedetta can take a step forward with the equipment change. Blinkers off. Let's see what Tamara can do in the Del Mar Debutante, your Saturday race of the day. Goodbye.